Are you doing intermittent fasting and wondering, can I have coffee? More so, can I have cream in my coffee? Tune into this video, my friends, because I'm about to make your mornings a little bit brighter. We're talking about intermittent fasting and all the coffee things that you need to know. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, most recently keto convert. I'm also somebody that's been practicing intermittent fasting. I think the first time I started it, and I have a video that I should link up to here, I think it was back in 2009, if I recall, uh, when I read Brad Pylon's Eat, Stop, Eat. That's when I first started doing intermittent fasting. So it's been a while. I've been doing intermittent fasting for, I would just say, the better part of most of, of these years. I, I stopped for a while. I've definitely brought it back into my life. It's something that works very well with my lifestyle. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Certainly now that I've gone keto, I am a huge advocate of it. I have learned that keto and keto and intermittent fasting goes so well together, like peanut butter and jelly. That was a poor choice of words seeing peanut butter and jelly to, to talk about keto. But anyway, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about, we're gonna talk about coffee because it is one of the single biggest questions that comes up with women that I coach when we talk about um, intermittent fasting. All the questions about coffee and intermittent fasting. Tune in so I can answer your questions because I know I'm gonna make you happy because coffee is so important. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back. You guys know that I am talking today about coffee and intermittent fasting. And for those of you um, who've been tuning in for a while for my, to my channel, you know that I've been doing intermittent fasting off and on, for the most part on, um, gosh, and I just realized I, I set my camera up here and I didn't even turn on my, my light to my camcorder. Wake up, Kelly, there we go. Look how much brighter I look. Does that look better? Do I look younger? Um, I've been doing intermittent fasting for the better part of, what is it? It's 2022. I think the first time I referenced this in the introduction, the first time I started intermittent fasting, I think it was 2009. In fact, I remember it was 2009 because I know what job I was working. So yeah, it's been 10, 12 years. Um, so I'm a huge fan. It's obviously something that's still a part of my life right now. I have, um, I stopped for a while when I was doing my reverse diet. Um, when I was doing my reverse diet for about 10, 12, oh gosh, almost a year, I was not doing any kind of fasting and that was recommended by my functional medicine doctor, also by my trainer. and. That was for the purpose of healing my adrenals. Um, we were not doing any kind of, I mean, the whole goal of that reverse diet was, <clears throat> excuse me, to relax my body, relax my adrenals, chill out my hormones. So I was not doing a lot of working out. I was eating more. And the last thing I wanted to do was incorporate fasting. Fasting can be stressful on the body. Um, when done right, when your body is in the right state, it is a good stressful thing, okay? Now, what we're talking about today is the topic of coffee and intermittent fasting. And what's funny to me is that this is typically the number one question that women who I coach, so for, for those of you, let me be clear, I, now, I have coached women in the past, kind of informally, and now I am really coaching a lot of women. I offer uh, keto and weight loss coaching services for women, and I also offer, excuse me, offer hormone consulting uh, coaching services for women to help them um, basically get on the right track with uh, hormone balance. And by that, I mean, in, in the area of hormones, um, women typically, once they start going into perimenopause and hit the age of 40, 
are totally lost, just like I was, um, with not having any idea what to do to start getting bioidentical hormonal replacement therapy. They don't know how to find a functional medicine doctor. They don't know how to go about getting the, the right blood work done. They're usually getting really poor advice from doctors like their OBGYN, endocrinologists, um, maybe their primary care doctor. They're on all kinds of bad medications and they're just in a very uh, bad place, bad medication, bad doctors. They might be hearing about things like bioidenticals and knowing that there's a better future, but they don't know how to get started. That's where I help women coaching in that area. So when I say I help women with hormonal balance, it's not that I'm prescribing medication or doing anything from a medicinal nature, I'm not a doctor, but what I do is I usually consult with women one time to help answer all of their questions because I figured all of that out. I've been down that road. So I help women avoid all of the years of trial and error and help get them on that path faster so that they can find uh, the right answers, get on bioidenticals, get with the right doctor and start getting their body operating efficiently and optimally so that they can then lose weight, get in the best shape of their lives and start enjoying these years just like I am. I'm 53, I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, I've just had the biggest weight loss transformation ever, but that's because I was able to optimize my hormones. So that's part one. Part two is then I work with women um, in the area of weight loss after 40. Um, so usually, um, as long as a woman doesn't have major hormone issues, I'm helping them um, with keto and weight loss and um, coaching them in, in that area. The number one question, because I'm usually recommending, if they can do it, if they're open to it, I'm recommending uh, a keto plan with it combined with intermittent fasting. It makes, it makes keto so much easier to do when you're doing it with intermittent fasting. Coffee always comes up. And what's also funny is as I was researching and planning this video, um, part of what those of us that are content creators do is we do keyword research, which basically just means we're coming on to Google or YouTube in this case, and, and we're searching to see uh, how we're gonna title our videos and, and we're optimizing our videos to see what people are um, searching for so that our, our content can be found by the right people. We wanna create content and then make sure that it gets found by the right people. Well, when I looked up that I was gonna be uh, creating a video about this, because I knew that this was something I needed to address because it still is just the number one thing people ask is, you know, can I have coffee? Can I have caffeine? Can I have cream in my coffee? Uh, should I, can I have bulletproof coffee? Will this break my fast? If I have 30 calories of cream in my coffee, will that break my fast? Um, if I have coffee 15 minutes too early, will that ruin my intermittent fasting? You know, I mean, all these questions around coffee, it's just constant. Constant, like this is the number one question that I field from clients that I'm coaching. More than any other question, it's around coffee. And the littlest things about how much cream can I put, is one tablespoon too much? Is, is a tablespoon and a half? Will that be, you know, it's, and I'm like, it's mind numbing how much, how many questions I will, and I'm like, so I have to make a video about this. Well, then I go on YouTube and I see that 4,500, I think it's 4,400 or 4,500 people are searching for intermittent fasting and coffee, which means it tells me again, I was chatting with my husband. I'm like, this is how many people, and it's similar with Google. This is how many people are searching for this topic. And I know that that's what this is about, because if this is the number one question that people are asking me, the number one question that I see people talking about in intermittent fasting forums that women ask about on social media, it, it has to be addressed. And, and here's, this is probably gonna be a shorter video than, than you anticipate. And again, I would like to preface my answer by saying, this is my opinion, obviously. It's based on my experience and I don't claim to be, in any of my videos, I don't claim to be the be-all, end-all expert. I never will, I never have. 
I'm certain that there is somebody who could reply to my video and say, I can contradict this with different data, different science, different facts, have at it. What I'm gonna say is that my experience, my opinion has worked tremendously well for me and my clients. The advice that I've given off to my clients, all the women that I have coached, every single woman that I have coached and who has gone through my brand new um, five day, I've got a brand new five day keto boot camp course. Um, and every woman that I have coached has lost over 25 pounds. Plus I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds going keto and incorporating this advice I'm gonna to give to you. So I'm okay sharing this advice. Like anything, I know that there is likely contradictory evidence. You have to choose what, you're, what advice you're gonna follow. So if you wanna say, okay, Kelly, there's somebody out there that says exactly the opposite. If you wanna follow that advice, follow that advice. I would prefer to choose the advice that's uh, the road a little easier traveled. And if the road easier traveled also works, I don't know, which road would you rather travel? Do you wanna climb Mount Everest and see if that works for you? Or do you wanna like go down an easier road? You choose. So here are my thoughts on intermittent fasting and the coffee topic. Women get so freaked out and so hung up and usually it's not about whether or not they can have coffee. It's they want to have a cup of coffee in the morning when they're still fasting. So most women that I know are doing the fasting, kind of fasting that I'm doing, which is we're fasting until lunch, right? Until about one o'clock, maybe two o'clock, whatever. That's the fasting window. So we're, we're having our last meal at, at night for dinner we're going to bed, we're fasting all through the night, we get up in the morning, but we want that morning cup of coffee. Who doesn't, right? Um, I do. So I'll tell you this, I get up in the morning and the entire time that I've been intermittent fasting, I have always had a cup or two cups of coffee. Now the way that I've made my cup of coffee in all those times has changed. I have never done black coffee, ever. I've tried it and I tried to get into it a couple of times, but I, I God bless all of you who like black coffee. I think you're weird. Um, if you say that you like it, I don't know what's wrong with you because that is disgusting. Um, I have always done intermittent fasting and had a cup of coffee in the morning. Usually, the way that I've made my coffee has been some variation the, over the past several years of either, before I was keto, I made it with um, almond milk and, and um, actually this, this sweetener, which is, this was even before I was keto. So uh, this was a client of ours back at Fitfluential, and this is a really, really, really good sweetener. Um, you can order this from Icon Foods or just go to the website. I'll link it below, guygonketo.com. This is a really, really good sweetener. And I've been using this for years. And of course, now that I'm keto, I use it even more. Um, so before I was keto, I was using that or some stevia, maybe. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm using this. Sometimes I use Splenda and don't judge me. I don't care. Um, uh, now I do um, bulletproof coffee or uh, keto coffee, which is like from, from Prove It, the keto, that was a hiccup, uh, keto coffee, which is 130 calories. It's with, made with MCT oil. Um, when I'm doing bulletproof coffee, I'm usually doing um, that on days when I'm doing, um, like today, I'm doing OMAD, one meal a day. So it's kind of a variation of an intermittent fasting day. So, and, but it doesn't matter. I, that's just, here's, here's my position on coffee. Now this is, I would, I would say, I probably would in, in a normal situation not have a bulletproof coffee um, in my morning only because that's, 
Um, it's 200 calories the way I make my um, bulletproof coffee. But here's, here's my position and here's why I'm, I'm okay with having, having coffee and having cream in your, in your coffee. And, and here's also why I would probably be okay with even doing a bulletproof coffee. And it really comes down to awareness. The power of intermittent fasting is really that you're limiting your eating window, which limits the time that you're eating your meals, which puts you in a caloric restriction, which is how most people will, will end up losing weight. When women start to obsess about, oh my God, is this breaking my fasting window? Oh, that's, that's not what's gonna ruin your weight loss. If you, if you put a splash of cream in your coffee, which would end up probably being, even if it was full fat cream, I think I have some in my refrigerator right now. It's probably not good, but I'm just gonna see what the, I'm seeing what the calories are. Sorry, 50 calories. If you put a, a whole tablespoon of, of coffee, of coffee, if you put a whole tablespoon of heavy fat cream in your coffee, 50 calories, and enjoyed a cup of coffee with full fat cream, and, or if you put two and you had a 100 calorie cup of coffee, 100 calories is not gonna break you. It's, it's going to be if you had if, if you went to, now, if you go to Starbucks and you ordered a caramel macchiato, which was, and, and it was a grande or a vente, and you got, you know, all the bells and whistles on it, and you weren't paying attention to what you ordered, some of those drinks can be six, seven, eight hundred, even some of them can be 1200 calories. That's where you're going to have a problem. If you make a coffee at home and you know exactly what you're putting into it and you have a, you know, when I was making my coffees, I remember back in the day, the way I was measuring it, it was a half a cup of almond milk. And because I was using um, you know, sweetener, the only calories I was putting into my coffee was the almond milk. So I knew that I, if I had two cups of coffee, it was 30 calories. That 30 calories is not going to make an impact on my overall caloric intake for the day. So whether or not that broke my fast, Sure, maybe that milk broke my fast, but it doesn't matter because with intermittent fasting, you're not really focusing on autophagy as much as you're focusing on simply creating a window where you're, again, you're, you're eating your meals in a smaller window of time. So if you're only eating two meals, which is what most people do when they're intermittent fasting, you're gonna have lunch and dinner. And ideally, you would not snack. That's what I do. Then you have less time to eat. So you eat less. So you eat in a caloric deficit, which most people, before they start dieting, your average American is eating all day. I, fin I just finished reading a book by Dr. Mercola, and they were talking about some statistics where your average American is eating 18 hours a day like round the clock, like from the time you get up to, and so the more that you can just minimize your window, if you, and they were talking about the benefits of just literally, like if you did nothing else, even if you changed, if you didn't even change your diet, but if you literally just shorten that window and shut your pie hole and stopped eating from, and, and said, okay, I'm only gonna eat from 12 to eight or 12 to six or whatever it was, and you didn't eat in that other time. And, and even if you still get, had that cup of coffee, that little cup of coffee, not your Starbucks cup of coffee with whipped cream and caramel and biscotti on the side, a normal cup of coffee, okay? Even me making my Bulletproof coffee. I could make my Bulletproof coffee. That's 200 calories. I know exactly what's in that cup of coffee. 200 calories, it's more than 100, but I know exactly what's in it, okay? Now, it makes me have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more knowledgeable about what I'm having the rest of the day. Because if, 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 if what I'm doing is having 1,600 calories a day, if I have 200 calories in my Bulletproof coffee, excuse me, and usually on days that I'm doing OMAD, which is one meal a day, I have two Bulletproof coffees. I'm just giving you an example of why 
everything is about awareness. It's, it's just about awareness and, 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 and making sure you know what you're putting in your pie hole. So on a one meal a day, I do two Bulletproof coffees. This is what I'm, I'm working with right now. And, and just stay tuned to this channel because watch, I will share my results over the next month to see what my, what my results are incorporating this one meal a day approach. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I don't believe I'm gonna do it every day. I think I'm gonna do it several times a week and then incorporate a 24 hour fast one day a week. And then my doctor, my functional medicine doctor is asking me to incorporate two higher carb days, um, one to two high carb days, healthy carbs a week. So really starting to mix things up now that I'm a year into keto and we'll see what all of this kind of mixing things up does. I still would like to lose maybe another five pounds five to seven pounds. Um, so we'll see what that does. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you have hit the bell so that you're notified. We'll be putting out five new videos every week. Sorry, I've been gone. I had COVID, but make sure you're subscribed. I will update you on all of this stuff, but back to the Bulletproof coffee thing. When you have Bulletproof coffee, if I have two in the morning on days when I'm doing OMAD, say I have two, that's 400 calories. If I'm aiming for 1600 calories a day, that means I have 1200 calories left, right? So typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have another, I'm gonna have a ketones drink, um, maybe two, um, and then I still have 1200 calories left for my, my main meal. Um, but if I really get hungry and I have something, I just gotta, you know, you just gotta make sure you're, you're remembering like, okay, I've got 1200 calories left. I've, I've taken out, you know, 400, but if you, if you have your coffee, um, with your cream in it or, or whatever, it doesn't matter if it breaks your fast, who cares if it breaks your fast? Like I told you, what I've learned is that the benefits of just eating in a smaller window of time during the day is of such great benefit to the average American who has been typically grazing from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we sit down and crash in our bed at night. That is going to help you lose weight. Obsessing over 50 calories, a splash of milk in your coffee is a waste of your stress. And I can also tell you from my personal experience, I have spent more time the past decade obsessing over stupid shit like this. And I mean obsessing. And those of you who have been tuning into my channel for a while know this. I used to obsess about everything. And guess what? I was obsessing over the wrong stuff. I was, I think my husband might be coming home, so I do need to wrap this up because my dog is about to come in here and attack me. My, I would go train with my trainer at Gold's Gym and he would, you know, I would go in and that is them. They're going to walk in any second. And he would, he would tell me like, oh, you had ketchup on your turkey meatloaf. I never have ketchup. That's bad for you. And then I would obsess about the fact that I'd had ketchup on my turkey meatloaf. Life is too short. We've got to stop obsessing about the wrong things. Have cream in your coffee. Hey guys, I hope this video cleared up some of the confusion on intermittent fasting and coffee. And now I hope you can enjoy your morning cup of coffee. If you wanna see some other videos on keto and fasting and similar topics, click this playlist and check it out.